So here's part two of our little demonstration that we're starting here. So now to adjust our markers uh, so that the pictures change with the music, I'm going to go back, I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to pan over, all right, and now I'll come back here. So I see my first two markers are here, all right. If I hold the shift again, it's going to snap to it. Now, this is my title here, all right? So I know that's animated. I don't really want to mess with this. And and because typically, you know, what we'd be doing is we're going to change the duration. But if I shorten this, all right, um, now I'm not going to see that full animation. So I'm going to kind of ignore, or I could go in here and I could actually clear this marker. really, Because I don't really want to have um, my text really affected my title. So, I mean, I don't necessarily have to delete them, but I think that's might be a good thing to do. All right. So, so after your title, then we can come in here and we're just going to adjust the duration as it's called. So here's my first picture. It's going to go from this marker so now if I hold shift and drag over, now it's going to snap to that marker. And now I can go into here and I can just drag over this duration. All right. So now when we play this, it's going to change at that marker, which is indicating our, our beat. Now we have this space here, right? There's two ways we can get rid of this. So I can right click and say ripple delete. It brings everything over or there's another tool we can use. And I'll go through this all again momentarily, all right? So if I want to go to this next marker, I'm going to hold shift. And now I know I need to shorten this one. So I could drag it over and do the ripple delete. However, we do have a tool that's called the ripple delete tool. Just have to find it in here. So here it is. It's grouped with the third one. So if I select that, it kind of saves a step. So now I can just drag this over and it automatically takes out that gap. So you don't have to use the ripple delete tool, but it will save you some time. All right. It's kind of one step it takes out. All right. So let's do that again. And I'll just kind of keep repeating with this. All right. So the easier way, right? So I am uh, moving my playhead, holding the shift to the next marker, and then I'm going to kind of zoom out. So the easy way, but one extra step, would just be dragging the edge of this clip over. Again, holding the shift key so that it snaps to that point. Then selecting the gap, right click and do a ripple delete. All right, the more efficient way, but it makes you think maybe a little bit more, is to hold shift, go to our next marker, and then use this ripple edit tool so that instead of having to remove the space afterwards, it removes the space while you're doing it. So that will definitely allow you to do this quicker. So now I can just go in here and go to that point. So I'm going to have to put some more markers in because I didn't really take into consideration my title in there. All right, but I can just kind of go back. Let's see if I wanted to put a marker here and try to identify these peaks. Maybe I even made them too close together, right? And this could be something that you're looking at with your own music. And if you're determining that your pictures are kind of advancing too quickly, then, you know, maybe you would want to do like every other marker or something like that. Um, I mean, you can make those markers pretty quick. So uh, that's something you can think about with your own project. So I'm just going to kind of come back and work on this, get these all in here. So I do need some more markers. All right, so what are we going to do to bring our logo into our timeline? Don't make more of this than it is. What did we do to get our pictures on the timeline? Dragged it in. So go into assembly and then we go into the uh, where the thumbnail is and then left click and then drag it onto the picture and then drag it to the timeline. Okay. So 
think I could consolidate that process a little more. But first thing you want to make sure you drag your playhead to the end of your pictures, right? And then all we're going to do is just drag our logo to the timeline. So now we have that in here. Um, for your projects, you will be putting your company logo in there also, all right? So we're going to be branding your identity a little bit more there. All right, so that was number 14, adding the DVC logo to the end. All right, and the next thing, now we're going to talk about some effects. All right, instead of just the video kind of ending abruptly, all right, where it would just kind of, we would call this a cut to black. Whenever you have uh, basically a transition going from one clip to another, that's called a cut or going from one camera angle or something like that to another. So instead of having this just abruptly going to black, we're going to make this fade out. Um, later on, we'll talk about how to like manually do that. But today, uh, so that would be using keyframes. Today, we're just going to do this using some presets. All right. So we're going to go to the effects workspace on the top. That brings up all these folders with presets. All right, we're going to go to video transitions. These are all the transitions that you have. You can experiment with these on your own projects if you'd like. But today we're just going to go into this category called cross dissolve or dissolve. And then we're just going to select cross dissolve and we're going to drag it onto our clip here. So you'll see if you zoom in here that it adds a little kind of marker on there of sorts. And now if we rewind back and play, we'll see our picture gradually fades out, right? Looks a lot more professional that way, I think. All right, so I'll do that again. All right, so just go up to your effects workspace. In the folder video transitions, we're going to dissolve, and then we're going to choose cross dissolve, and we're just gonna drag it onto our, our clip here. Questions on that? for your logo to be there or duration all right but I don't think it's in the directions but um, if you do have it like super long you can trim it down or more precisely if we right click it and do speed and duration um, I think in the project I'm going to have you make your logo five seconds so we could just change our duration to zero 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 five zero zero so it's zero hours zero minutes uh, minutes five seconds zero frames so we just right click the logo in this case go to speed and duration and then you can type in that duration all right I think a couple more things uh, so audio right right now our audio is going to play a lot longer than our video is right we can see that it extends way down the timeline so how can we get it to match the duration of our, all of our pictures? Sorry. What do you think, Jana? Um, you can zoom out and then just trim it by left-clicking it. So it That's it. It's that simple, right? So we just drag that edge. Oh, also, um, can you go over how to change the duration of the sure so that the duration again we just whatever clip you want to adjust select it right click and do speed and duration yep. all right so now we have our video is aligned with our audio but i think if we play this just like the picture abruptly stopped we'll find that the audio abruptly stops oh, i have it muted so i would want to turn that back on so it just kind of stops, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to now audio transitions, crossfade, and we're going to do constant or no, I'm sorry, exponential fade. We're just going to drag that onto the audio clip, similar to what we did with the picture. And now if we play this, it just nice and softly fades out. All right, so that was... Uh, exponential fade. It's in the audio transitions and then crossfade folder. Right now it's it's only in Premiere. We can't really upload this to YouTube as it is. 
So just the last part is called the, the rendering process, right? Combining this all into kind of one file that's viewable, you know, on many platforms. So first thing I would always want to save, and just as a side type of note, if you can see the little asterisk to the right side of my file name up here, that means whenever you see that, it means you've made some kind of change without saving. So if I do control S, now that asterisk goes away, all right? So you always want to kind of save. Um, and then I'm going to do file export media. All right, so that should bring up a pop-up window with some export settings. Uh, but you know what? I don't think I had, you have to have your timeline selected also. I think that's maybe why that wasn't popping up. Or There we go. All right. So once we do that, we have this export settings window. Um, we want to make sure our format is on H.264. All right. That creates an MP4 file, which is... Um, pretty good for file compression. It's a small file size, but high quality. All right, so really you're only gonna, there's gonna be three things in here I think that we're gonna be changing. Your format, you wanna change your output name. So this highlighted in blue, we are going to select that and I wanna save it to that same location. So OCVTS, oh, multimedia. Video, slideshow, practice. All right, and I'll just call this name. It takes the name from your, um, whatever your sequence name is. So that's why it didn't really get all that before. So slideshow practice PM, I'm gonna call this. It's in that location. So now we have the format, we have the name, the location. And I always like to change this source range, entire sequence. Um, so if you had an in and an out point in there, it would go and kind of process between those markers. Mr. Dason? Yep. I don't have that blue line at the bottom of the um, export media. Can you just tell me where that is? Yeah, I'm going to All right, hold on. Let me finish up the settings here, and then I'll review it, and maybe we can figure it out. Thank you. All right, so format, output name, source range and then we can just do export so now it's going to process all that stuff might take a couple seconds to kind of get going but it's going pretty quickly now um, when we get to video you know your the longer timeline um, will take a little bit longer to process but as we can see here now it's going through pretty pretty well all right um, and then from there you can go and check your file and I think what I'll say is if you get this done and uploaded it today I'll give you a hundred if you can post me your YouTube link in today's summary or in today's class comments um, if you're still working on it I know you guys have all been making good progress so You'll get full credit. Um, you guys at home, though, you have to take me a screenshot and show me. Basically, I should be able to see your markers, um, you know, and all your clips in there. And uh, put that in your class summary. All right. So you guys have, you know, show me that you've created this stuff and kind of been keeping up. But otherwise, I can go in here if you did get done. All right. So now I should be able to go into that folder and find my mp4 file so here it is I can double click it All right, it's lagging a little bit here but alright my markers are a little off alright but that's something we can work on alright so so then we would just go to YouTube, upload it, and get the link.